Hi, I'm George, and here we are, part 13 of the Horizon series. Now, a couple of episodes ago, we saw how we made the sustainers in a liner, and this week we're going to have a look at how we add the reinforcement layer and also add some fins and basically finish it off ready for flight. So let's jump straight into it. First, we sand the inner liner with 120 grit sandpaper to give us better adhesion surface for the next layer. We insert a PVC pipe into the nozzle. This will give us something to hold on to when we put the outer sleeve on. We just tape it in place with electrical tape and that also protects the nozzle from the epoxy. Now it's time to put the sleeve on. Each of the sustainers has a different weight sleeve. The heavier sleeve can hold more pressure, but it also weighs more. We put the sleeve dry onto the inner liner. The sleeve we are using is the 12K 2 inch sleeve from Solar Composites. After it gets put on, we stretch it and cut it to length. Then we insert another PVC pipe into the top end cap. This is the reason the top end cap was designed this way, so that we could support the pressure chamber when putting the reinforcement sleeve on. When that was done, we mixed up the West Systems epoxy and started rolling it on until it was fully saturated. Then we stretched the sleeve by hand. You have to work it slowly to get all the crinkles out of it. Then you can use your hands as a squeegee to remove the excess glue. Then we tie off the end with a piece of wire to keep the sleeve stretched. This wire will later be removed after the glue cures. Now we add a single wrap of 85 GSM fiberglass cloth to the outside. This gives the sleeve a smoother finish and it also gives us something to sand into without cutting into the carbon fibers underneath it. We put it on in three sections as it's easier to manage compared to one long piece. The overlaps are just sanded down to an even level. We then also cover the end caps with a number of fiberglass gauze to finish those off properly. Then we trim off the excess sleeve. And finally the whole thing goes onto the rotisserie for a couple of hours. The same process was then carried out for the lighter 3K sleeve on the second sustainer. When applying the veil layer, we always roll away from the center to keep the cloth tight. Then onto the rotisserie. Before the epoxy gels over, we dry brush the surface a little to help smooth out any of the bubbles that may have formed as a result of the foam roller rolling on it. The next day, when it is cured, we can trim off the excess sleeve. Then we can remove the electrical tape and the PVC pipe from the top end cap and from the nozzle end. Then we file down where the fiberglass gauze overlap to give us a nice smooth finish. And finally, we can give the whole pressure chamber a good sand again with 120 grit sandpaper. Always wear a dust mask when doing this. You don't want to be breathing in any of the glass fibers. Next, it was time to make up the fins. We make these from 1.5mm carbon fiber sheet. We get these panels from Hobby King and we can get two fins out of each panel. The panels themselves are 100mm wide and 300mm long and have a nice glossy finish, so there's no need to do anything else to them. We went through three saw blades to cut out six fins. Then we sand the edges of the fins. We don't bother beveling the edges, we just round them off as the fins are thin enough already. Carbon fibre is messy. Now it was time to attach the fins to the pressure chamber. After sanding the edges of the fin for better adhesion, we mix up some super strength araldite epoxy. We are using this glue to tack the fins on. Only a fairly thin bead of glue is needed for this step. We are using an alignment jig to hold the fins in place while the epoxy cures. This jig is made out of four aluminium angle brackets that just sit on top of the rocket. We put a spacer between the brackets that's the same width as the fin. This gives us ideal alignment with the rocket body. Here is a cross section of how the alignment jig sits on top of the rocket. The fin then sits like this inside of the jig. 
Here's a couple of examples of different rockets we've made using this jig. The roll rate is quite small. Ok, back to the fins. We also add a small bead of epoxy along the fin's root edge. Then we carefully slide it along into the jig and when it's in place we drop it down. Finally we add a couple of clamps to make sure the fin isn't going anywhere. We let that sit for half a day before moving on to the next fin. When all the fins are tacked on it's time to mask them for making the fillets. We used some blue masking tape for the body and electrical tape for the fins. We found the electrical tape doesn't hold well to the sanded rocket body, so the need for the blue tape. We use epiglue for the fillets. This is a gel-like two-part epoxy. After mixing, we apply it to the joints with a skewer stick. To form the fillet shape, we use a piece of PVC pipe. You simply run it down the edge and it gives you a nice shape. The nice part about the epiglue is that you can flip the rocket over and do the next set of fillets without sagging the fillets you just made. We can then touch up the leading and trailing edges with a skewer stick. When all the fillets are formed and still wet, we carefully remove all of the masking tape. This prevents the tape from sticking and also allows the masked edges to round off nicely by themselves. And now we leave the fillets to cure overnight. Next it was time to do some pressure tests. We had built a short test pressure chamber that used exactly the same construction techniques as the actual pressure chamber with a lighter carbon sleeve. We wanted to use this pressure chamber to see what the upper pressure limit would be. Here we're doing a hydro test by first completely filling it with water. We placed it inside a scuba tank that's had its bottom cut off. We also connected it to the air adapter you saw in a previous video and hooked it up to the Horizon launcher. We piled up a bunch of pavers on top of that to try and minimize the amount of free floating debris should the pressure chamber fail. We then proceeded to pressurize it to 1250 psi. The pressure chamber held up well, but we did notice a couple of small drops emerge right around the nozzle at full pressure. Now this would have totally been flyable in a real rocket. We certainly didn't see any of the failures or leaks we did with the previous set of pressure chamber tests. The improvements in the construction technique looked like they worked. Then it was time to hydro test the actual rockets. We wanted to test these non-destructively as again we'd rather blow them up on the pad during launch then blow them up in the backyard and then not have anything to take with us to thunder. The rocket was strapped to a piece of wood to keep it from bending under the weight of the water in it. We pressurized the thinner walled rocket first to 800 psi and noticed there weren't any leaks at either the top end cap or the nozzle end. This is a close up of the rocket undergoing tests. The tail cone has had another layer of fiberglass put on to help strengthen it but at this stage it was still unsanded. As you can see the nozzle end is dry at full pressure. We did the same for the thicker walled rocket and pressurized it to 900 psi. Again there was no sign of leaks from either end. We were really happy about this as it meant we could continue to finish both of the rockets. Next we glued PVC rings to the top of the pressure chambers. These will support the nose cone deployment mechanism. We also inserted a steel pin that will serve as the shock cord attachment point. The pin's removable so we can easily disconnect the shock cord. Then we gave the rocket a final sand with 240 grit paper. This gives it a nice smoother finish ready for painting. Once that was done we masked off the fins. The fins have a nice enough finish that they don't need painting. Because we were getting a little short on time we had to do the spray painting at night. Here we're giving the rockets a few coats of spray putty. This fills in any little pits in the surface. This stuff dries pretty fast so you can recoat it after about 10 or 15 minutes. The next day when it's all completely dry we sand most of it off again with 120 grit paper. You can see most of the carbon showing through again. Then we use wet and dry 400 grit paper to make it even smoother. The wet sanding helps with dust control and also prevents the paper from clogging up as much. When that's dry we can start putting on the top coats. 
We're using Ulux's Duramax paint because it has a fairly fast drying time. You can recode after about 10 minutes and it's touch dry in about 2 hours. We do a total of 5 thin coats. We find that this tends to give the best results overall. Both rockets get the same treatment. Then we remove the masking tape from the top of the rocket. We also remove the masking tape from the fins and also from the nozzle. We can also now remove the PVC pipe we had in the nozzle that we used for turning the rocket while spray painting. And here are the two sustainers almost complete. Next we do a test on the rocket to see how fast it fills from the launcher. We have the option of including a flow restrictor that slows the fill rate. The rocket is not filled with water as we want to see how long it takes to fill the volume of air. We're only filling the rocket to about 450 psi. Here we can see that the flow restrictor is reducing the flow too much, which would take a long time to pressurize the rocket. So we decided to remove the flow restrictor and we will pulse air into the rocket to control the fill rate. The last thing to do to the rockets is to put the vinyl decals on them. A big thank you to Sasha from Victoria for making these decals for us. First you peel off the back and press it down onto the rocket making sure that it is well aligned. Then you rub the decal to press it down and apparently this also activates the glue. And finally you carefully peel off the front paper. The very last thing that needs to be done before flight is to pose with the rockets. So those sustainers are now ready for flight. We're going to take them up to Thunder and give them a go. Uh, but that's all for this week. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Okay, and we're launching in five, four, three, two, one, launch. Shoots out, and we've got to shoot.